Hi friends, host Eric here, host Talking Fans People. I want to talk about Alex Jones banning and the the rights associated the issues in general associated with that. So first let me just say I got this concept for this video from this copy on, on the copy Eric Thor video there was a Matt Christensen video on the Alex Jones banning free speech, free association, etc. And I decided I'd copy that topic without watching the video, as I did with the Eric Thor video, because I like the idea of the topic. It seems like a good topic. It's topical for now and other sort of reasons. So here's what I have to say about it. First of all, it doesn't matter why he was banned. The reason it doesn't matter why he was banned is because neither of the relevant factors in the matter are have to do with anybody's justifications for banning him. So number one relevant factor in the matter is he has no standing to complain about anything. That's not his company, YouTube. That's not his company, Apple. That's not his company, whatever else pulled his ass. I don't know. And so it doesn't get matter. They don't even need to provide any rationale or justification. They can just say, this, we don't want him here. That's it. Um... Number two question, though, is, is it a good idea to ban him? The answer to that, I would say, is absolutely not. Anytime you try to drive something like that underground, it becomes more powerful. Now, all of a sudden, his conspiracy theory stuff has a little bit more teeth to it, right? Because here he is getting banned. Oh, my God, see? The new world order is raising its... It's just not necessarily a wise thing to do if you really want to see that voice fail, then it needs to fail in the marketplace of ideas. To the extent that some people aren't going to accept the verdict of said marketplace, well, let there be kooks. If they do something transgressive, then they're guilty of that crime. There's nothing wrong with being hateful towards groups. I mean, <laughs> yes, there's something wrong with being a hateful towards groups. What I mean to say is... <laughs> there's nothing transgressive about it. You know, there's, there's nothing... You haven't committed... an act that's transgressive against anybody. Now, I've made plenty of claims about how we ought to distinguish Muslim communities in terms of our immigration policies um, for a variety of reasons implicit to their being Muslim. So does that qualify as hate speech? I've got lots of good reasons for it and I'm absolutely not advocating any violence against anybody including Muslims. I am not advocating that Muslims who are already here be treated any differently than anybody else. I'm advocating specifically that the rights of all individuals be respected here, right? But I don't believe that there's a right to immigration because as long as the nation states exist, then there you must continue to play by those rules or somebody's going to come take you over. It's just how it goes. I mean, not anybody's going to take the United States over militarily, but uh, if anyone who wants to move here is allowed to come and move here and whatever, I mean, we just... It, it, there's a There are advantages that are specific to your, your in-group that you want to sustain and threats to the in-group you want to thwart and that's just good sensible loyalty stuff you know it's not like it, that's why there are negative and positive obligations and duties I think that we have a positive obligation to be cautious in things that might threaten the in-group I think we have a negative obligation not to violate people's rights in the process those are different things. I understand that the my position on the positive obligation is a policy position that's not 
universal and I can't claim it to be objectively necessarily so because after all I'm making a positive statement about what we ought to do not a negative statement about what we ought not to do it might seem like a negative statement because I'm saying let's not let in immigrants but really what I'm saying is let's prevent them from entering now at that point you might say well then you're going to have to be transgressive no because a border represents a line of trespass and it's reasonable for the party being trespassed upon to enforce that to make sure that passes are passes and not trespasses so uh, I just don't buy that there's a right to immigration there's a right to not be shot at when you come to try to immigrate there's a right to be treated decently and treated as a human being and there's a right to be turned away you know I mean we have I think the, the those who comprise the nation have the right to turn away those who don't for as long as nation states continue to exist um, the nod to reality you know so in regards to this free speech thing I'm very skeptical of policies that try to distinguish hate speech from non-hate speech however I also am aware that there's reality say of bullying that in there are plenty of instances where it might be a good idea to well see even then it's like it's a good idea to empower people to not let that like Facebook for example Facebook is very good about about controlling the extent to which trolls and bullies and such can abuse you on Facebook it makes it really easy to block people and so that's good enough you don't have anything to complain about then there's no reason to take that person's shit down because anybody they're bothering is going to block them so I mean that's the thing if it bothers you don't watch it now if he were if Alex Jones were making direct threats of physical violence or in, inciting directly physical violence then they'd have cause to get the legal authority authorities in, in, in play here as they should in that instance well I don't know if they necessarily should it would depend on the specifics of what were said but um and that's a different that's a line a different line it doesn't sound to me like he's crossed that line and the fact that he doesn't like Muslims does not mean that his speech doesn't deserve a space in I mean it, put it this way that his to the extent that his beliefs are toxic it is better to get him as centrally located in the marketplace of ideas as possible to make him actually try to compete with major media players and get scrutinized accordingly now there's going to always be a loyal base of his followers who believe in his more kooky of notions I don't I mean I don't really know what he's not advocating anything with any substance or subtlety or nuance at all he's just I don't even know what the fuck that guy is all about he's like it's like you know alarming story time at at story theater it's not anything that anybody could possibly take seriously I wouldn't wouldn't imagine but obviously there's a population of people who do I wouldn't worry very much about that population growing unless you do something stupid like banning it but it's not you know who am I to judge any of these private companies for choosing to do whatever the fuck they want with their space I don't I don't uh, necessarily I, I mean I'm pretty happy with YouTube for sure I, I don't really have anything to complain about so it's like I'm fairly controversial I guess but um, I mean I've drawn pictures of Mohammed and stuff to make a point about the, the need for prioritizing negative rights over the sacred <laughs> but does that qualify as hate speech I mean it shouldn't because I'm establishing clearly why it ought not be considered hate speech so 
Anyway, that's neither here nor there. If I were to get banned for hate speech, I would be, I would throw an absolute fucking fit. I don't know how. Nobody would know where to hear me throw a fit because I'd be banned from YouTube. But, um, you know, I would, it would be, it would seem to me to be, this is the problem with, with the hate speech thing, is it is true that there are qualitative as well as quantitative differences between the content. The kind of stuff that I'm doing is not just less close to the edge of hate speech, it's an entirely different sort of thing. It's not. It's actually not motivated by hate, it's motivated by prudence, good clear thinking, and ample logical justification. So it would be a whole different message being sent if uh, if they were to ban me or I were to get in trouble somehow for for just saying controversial shit or whatever. I don't, I don't know if I say anything that's really that controversial because I genuinely am I'm not motivated by ill will towards any group. I don't believe much in groups. And I don't believe that individuals are mostly representatives of their groups, even when they're acting as such. So, it's hard to nail me down for hate speech of anything. Um, I hate group identities. You know. That's not really uh, going to give me a hate speech strike, probably, though. Oh, man, I'm tired. i got to go to bed. So that's what I would say about the free speech issue. It's not a free speech issue because it's not his thing. He's, it's not public what he's talking on and it's neither and nor is it his property. So it's not a free speech issue. It, it is, however, a... You know, Matt Christensen mentions free association. He's going to try to stretch maybe that. I don't know how many of you have seen his video. He might try to stretch that to say, like, well, free association includes the right to associate in places where people normally go, like YouTube. Uh, don't go there. Just don't even go there. That's why we have petition holders outside of supermarkets and no place else, because the California Supreme Court had some asinine ruling sometime back that said supermarkets are public spaces while these other kind of businesses aren't, and yada, yada, yada. And it's... I'm not buying it. I'm not buying the free association argument, which relies upon um, YouTube being a public space. Well, there's never, there's not, aren't any public spaces on the internet. It's one of the reasons why the internet functions so much more well than does um, the external world. Why don't we have cops on the internet? Where are the internet cops? I mean, no, not YouTube and, and Apple and Facebook. They're not internet cops. Those are three apps slash sites that you can use, you know, if you agree to their terms of service. Because after all, it's theirs. Seriously, think about that. The reason there aren't any cops on the internet is because the Ownership rights to every space on the internet are clearly defined, and there is no public space. The extent that a public entity owns, privately owns a space, then they, the only difference is they call themselves a public entity. It's still another privately owned space. I can't get into the code of the government's websites just because I'm part of the public, and that means I'm part of the democracy, and I get to just do whatever I want to their code, right? Because it's privately owned by the government. Like every other space on the internet. And that's why we don't have cops. That's why you can't get pulled over on the internet, right? That's why we don't need any cops. It's very... We have the means to technologically prevent transgressive behavior. And thus... Th there's no might makes right. The, the closest thing there is to that would be like a um, 
denial of service attack, like a, a blunt force DOS. That would be like, um, might make, you know, the stronger person has an unfair advantage kind of situation as we would have in the physical world. On the internet, that's the closest equivalent you can get, and that's not that much of a threat, and by and large, people are able to defend themselves with things like dual layer, layer security, where every time I want to log in from a different device, i got to put in a code from my phone as well as enter my password and, you know, show them my testicles and all those kind of things. So bypasses the need for any sort of police enforcement like hey somebody just uh somebody just logged into my email and the internet police goes like some icon of a police man goes racing around the internet <laughs> you know it's impossible it makes no sense otherwise they would certainly have it I wouldn't be surprised if Congress debated something like that like how can we get policing the internet? Anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to put in your cheese.